David Kahn here with another IB question from topic 4.4. We're looking at uh, refraction of a wave as a wave travels from one medium into another. What we have in the diagram below is uh, a wave approaching the boundary between the two medium and what we're shown is uh, wave fronts incident on the boundary. So the wave fronts are these lines and the wave is traveling this way uh, as shown by this ray, this arrow. Um, the first medium is medium A, the second medium is medium B, and we're told that the ratio between the ratio of the refractive indices of the two mediums is 1.4. Uh, we're also told that the angle between the incident wave front and normal to the boundary is 50 degrees. So let's see if we can unpack what that is. Uh, the incident wave front uh, would be the wave front striking the boundary. So any of these three wave fronts could be considered to be incident wave fronts. And normal to the boundary is this dashed line. And we're told that the angle between those two lines is 50 degrees. That is this angle here. All right, we need to use the information that we're given to calculate the angle between the refracted wavefront and normal to the boundary. Uh, so we want to talk, we, we want to figure out in what way does the angle at which this wave is traveling change. So this is going to be Snell's law. Uh, the tricky thing about Snell's law in this case, though, is that we're not given the angle between the normal and the ray. We're given the angle between normal and the wavefront. So we need to first go back to the diagram and uh, fill in a little bit more information. Let's continue this ray all the way down to the boundary and throw in a normal here as well. Snell's law, we don't want just any angle, we want this angle. That's the angle between normal to the boundary and the ray. Uh, so that's our incident angle. We'll call that uh, theta A for medium A. And we're looking to get out the angle of refraction. Uh, so first we need to use a little bit of geometry to find this theta A. Uh, there's lots of ways that you can do this. Lots of triangles can be drawn here. I'm going to show you one way, but I'm sure you might be able to find your own. I'm going to get this angle using this right angle triangle. The sum of the angles in a right angle triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. So if this is 90 and that's 50, that's a total of 140 degrees so far. This has to be 40 degrees for this triangle to have uh, angles that add up to 180 degrees. Uh, I chose this angle because this, I chose to find this angle because this forms a Z rule with the angle that I'm looking for. Uh, and from the Z rule, I know that this must also be 40 degrees. So my angle of incidence I now know is 40 degrees, and I can use that with Snell's law. So let's go ahead and use Snell's law. Uh, Snell's law is going to tell us that the index of refraction in medium A times the sine of the angle of incidence in medium A has to equal the index of refraction in medium B times the sine of uh, the angle of refraction in medium B. Uh, we know theta A. That's what we just found. And we're going to try and find theta B. So let's rearrange to solve for theta B. Theta B uh, is going to be the inverse. Uh, let, let's not skip so many steps. Let's solve for sine of theta b first. Uh, we'll divide by nb. And now what I have is the index of refraction in medium a divided by the index of refraction in medium b. Uh, this is simply the reciprocal of what we have over here. Uh, I know that NB on NA is 1.4. So in other words, NA on NB is 1 on 
Now, if I want theta b, I know this term. I know that term. That's still 40 degrees. I can just take the inverse sine of both sides. Theta b is equal to all of that. So 1 divided by 1.4 times the sine of 40 degrees. Make sure that your calculator is in degree mode. Uh, oftentimes, you'll be working in radian mode. Uh, and if you don't make the switch, you're going to get the wrong answer. And your calculator is not going to give you a clue uh, that you've made a mistake. So always double check radian or degree mode anytime you're working with sine, cosine, tangent. Uh, when you punch this into your calculator, you should get uh, 27 degrees to two significant figures. Uh, still, that is not the answer, though. Still, that's not the answer, because we were asked to find the, uh, the angle between the refracted wave front and normal to the boundary, which, again, is not what Snell's law deals with. Let's draw on what we found so far. We found that the ray is going to bend inward from 40 degrees down to 27 degrees. But we're not looking for this angle of refraction, the angle between normal to the boundary and the ray. We're looking for the angle between normal to the boundary and the wave front. Uh, so let's zoom in here and draw in a, a wave front. The wave front should be perpendicular to the ray. So that should be a right angle. And the angle that we're looking for is this one, the angle between the wave front and normal to the uh, boundary. Uh, we found in our, we talked about with triangles before how the sum of the triangles have, to, the sum of the angles in a triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. Uh, same's true here. If this angle is 27 degrees, then uh, this angle has to be 63 degrees. The reason for that is that 63 plus 27 uh, plus 90 is 180 degrees. So what's that, what that means is that uh, the answer to our question down here, the angle between the wavefront and normal to the boundary, is not 27. It's 63 degrees. Finally, on the diagram, we want to construct three wave fronts to show the refraction of the wave at the boundary. We've drawn one in, uh, but I think, uh, and there's nothing wrong with it, but I'm going to redraw it from the beginning to make it a little bit neater. So here is normal. That's 40 degrees. And we said that the ray is going to bend towards normal. Uh, and therefore, the wave fronts are going to bend in such a way that they remain perpendicular to this ray. Uh, I'll draw them in green. The rays will remain, oh, sorry, the wave fronts will remain continuous at the boundary. So when the wave front reaches the boundary here uh, and enters medium B, it's going to continue from this point, but it's going to have to travel in a direction such that it remains perpendicular to the ray. So something like that. That has to be perpendicular, and it has to be continuous across the boundary. Same thing here, continuous across the boundary and then into the medium. And while this green line doesn't necessarily intersect the ray, they are perpendicular. Uh, there's two wave fronts. The third wave front should be equally spaced. So one, two, three, all equally spaced, all parallel and perpendicular to the ray. And it might look something like that. Uh, so three wave fronts, equally spaced, all parallel, all continuous at the boundary, and all perpendicular to the ray.